right here, right now. Welcome to Southwest Park. That is naughty. As much as I love a match day vlog, I do love a stadium tour. We've done some great ones so far this season, but there's one area we've completely neglected. London. London calling through the faraway town. And as you can tell by my slightly Wurzel accent, I'm not from around here. I'm just a small town boy living in a lonely world, but I've made my way all the way to South London to the home of Crystal Palace Football Club. Salhurst Park. We're going to do a tour. It's called a festive tour where they're going to give us some mulled wine, hot chocolate, gingerbread cookies and mince pies. And apparently Eze is dressing up as Father Christmas. I don't know about that. Tour's booked for 12 o'clock. It's like 10 a.m. so we're really early. So what we're going to do, we're going to do our trademark little wander around the outside of the stadium, have a little look around and whatnot. The club shop is over there past Sainsbury's. So we're going to start off this way, we're going to go past the fan zone, we're going to do a 360 all the way around and then finish up in the club shop over there. Remember when I go to all 20 of these Premier League stadiums, the rule is we need to buy one item, at least one item, from the club shop. So we're finishing the club shop and then we get on the festive tour. It's going to be a good day, let's go and check out Southhurst Park, shall we? Oh, before we do, remember to stick a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Let's go! So obviously we've mentioned it in previous videos, we went to like Bolton recently and seen all kinds of fan zones. Most clubs seem to have a fan zone as part of the stadium now, it seems to be the, the in thing. Uh, Old Trafford don't really have a designated fan zone, they have stuff around Old Trafford, but I do love a fan zone. And uh, yeah, Crystal Palace, as you can see, have a fan zone. Hang on, hang on. Again, if you're a subscriber of the channel, you'll know I get a little bit excited when I see corners of football stadiums. Now this one, like most, is open. Properties inside Southwest Park. I love it. As much as, you know, I love Old Trafford, I love big dome stadiums too. I love walking past football stadiums and having a sneak peek. I know we're going in there in a bit. Woo, she's looking good. So then, ladies and gents, as you can see, by this well put together sign, this is Holmesdale Road. Now if you look all the way down the road, it goes down a hill, and that's the, the main entrance to like the reception area, the fan zone, where I parked, where I've just been. And this end over here, as much as it's traditional for the fact that it's set amongst your standard terraced housing, like a lot of old school British stadiums are, it looks a little bit different. If you look at the back of the stadium, at first glance, you wouldn't think that that was a, a football stadium. I mean, I was trying to trying to look out for Salhurst Park on the way here, and I actually couldn't couldn't notice it until I was right up close to it. From a distance, it kind of does look a little bit like a supermarket. So yeah, quite a unique looking club. But then again, we've not done any London clubs on the channel yet. This is the first one. Maybe this is what most London clubs are like. Let's make our way out of Holmesdale Road. And I think this is Park Road, possibly. I don't know what's going on with the signs around here. Absolutely battered. See, this corner isn't quite as sexy, let's be honest. Not as much of a tease going on here. Um, again, it's a little bit weird, isn't it? That stand looks completely different when you see it on TV from the front. It's really curved, really unconventional. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Is this unique to Crystal Palace or... Is this a thing amongst old school English football grounds? The ones I've done so far, the ones up north and stuff, have looked a little bit more angled, as you'd expect. Right then guys, so not that much to show you down here. This is the Arthur, Arthur Waite stand. It's not the most beautiful of stands. You've got the, the wall, and then beyond the wall, you've got this old classroom looking building. Looks a little bit rough and ready. So that side over there looks a bit like a supermarket. That side a little bit like an old fashioned classroom or school, old fashioned school. Uh, I am being a little bit harsh, I think, to Crystal Palace so far, because I'm sure it is going to be lovely inside. But I'm trying to be as honest as possible here on Royce Football Paradise. 
Right then guys, so behind me over here you've got the White Horse Lane stand. Now this is again a little bit unique and weird because it basically is the back of that Sainsbury's I was talking about. This is where all the deliveries come in for Sainsbury's. But the White Horse Lane stand is over there and I'm guessing White Horse Lane is probably over there. Let's go and uh, double check. Yeah, it says it over there. I can't be bothered to cross the road but it says White Horse Lane and again this stadium is like completely baffling me in a good way it's really really unique and different because backing onto this stadium you've kind of got like masonettes flats so Sainsbury's back of it looks a bit like Sainsbury's and terraced housing the back of Sainsbury's where they do the deliveries and a busy road and down here you've got these kind of unique masonette looking houses really really different Salho's Park so far uh, quirky and we love quirky on Royce Football Paradise just feel like with every turn around the stadium I'm gonna find something a little unique and uh, unorthodox and ladies and gents back where we started we started over there Sainsbury's is there but just before Sainsbury's we've got the club shop as I mentioned we've got to go in there we've got to buy something we bought something at Liverpool I'm a United fan by the way, bought some at Liverpool, bought some at Man City, everywhere we've been we've picked up an item. Can I just say as well, I've always had a slight soft spot for Crystal Palace because my, because the team I played for as a kid, Ledbury Swifts, we played in red and blue and it was exactly the same as the Crystal Palace shirt, so I was always fascinated by Palace as a kid. They were a bit of a yo-yo team in the 90s, I'm a 90s kid, born in 89, so uh, Early memories would be the TDK sponsor, the Bold Eagle, Lombardo. Doesn't look like the biggest of shops over there. Let's go and check it out, shall we? Let's go. So what did I get from the club shop? Well, I always start off every time I come out of the club shop by slagging off the United Club Shop, as I do in every video. I was at Stoke City, the Bet365 Stadium, this past week. And even Stoke, who play in the Championship, had a better shop than United. United Shop is just like clothing, just like an Adidas mega store. The Palace Shop was decent, wasn't the biggest, but had loads of quirky items for kids. I know I'm not a kid, I'm a 34 year old grown ass bloke, but I do love the novelty stuff and Palace had loads of that so it's quite tricky to make a decision I have gone with though the security guard said he's called Pete the two mascots Pete and Alice the two eagles I didn't I'm a bit of a tight ass so I just bought Pete Alice will have to wait until next time Right then guys, so back at the car, uh, just dropped my stuff off. I'm about to go in, go to the toilet and do the stadium tour in a moment. I just want to make note that this is the back of the fan zone of course and there is a match day shop over there as well. So that'll be open on match day. So you've got the shop over there and a match day shop. And there is there was like a little collection point as well. I think if you order stuff online possibly, as well as the ticket office within the big club shop where we've just been. So anyway, I'm really excited to uh, to go and check this out. Hopefully they let me do a little bit of filming. Otherwise we're a little bit screwed for this video. Whatever happens, I'm gonna enjoy it anyway. Remember this is a festive tour. As I mentioned, mulled wine, hot chocolate, mince pies, gingerbread men, and Eze dressed as Father Christmas. Let's go. Guys, 
is I'm going to add some narration over the top of this. So as you can see, we waited around in the lobby area. It's a nice little area. They give you a tour map. As, again, as you can see, it seems to be more geared towards kids. They get a lot of kids, like classrooms, school classes, coming to do the Southwest Park tour. We started off in the Vice President's Lounge. Now you can see lots of sign player shirts on the wall. This is where we had some of those Christmas treats. Remember, this is a festive tour. Um, the group was really diverse, varied. We had people from Germany, people from Australia. I obviously wasted no time in scranning the food down. That is our tour guide right there, Jane. Jane was a really good tour guide here. She's showing some of the trophies that Crystal Palace have won. They've won some quite unorthodox trophies. No major honours like FA Cups or anything like that. You can see the FA Cup final loss and loser's medal against Man United. That's a really weird trophy. They're the champions of Iran from like the 70s or something. Into the boardroom. Again... Jane did ask who we all supported and she'd just previously been slagging off Man United for the two FA Cup final losses. So I didn't want to break her heart and say I'm a Man United fan. So I told her I was a Forest Green fan. But as you can see on the wall, yes, Southwest Park is in for a bit of a renovation. They've been granted planning permission for that new stand. The council has given them permission. That will give them an extra 8,000 seats to Salvers Park. As I check my notes, I think to Salvers Park capacity is yet yeah, just over 25,000, 25,486 according to Wikipedia. Now these little lounge areas are probably my least favorite parts of any tour. Um, even though we will do some hospitality tours at some point, I like to be amongst the riffraff, the peasants. This isn't really my sort of thing. A lot of these fans, should I say, a lot of these people on the tour came from Germany because they watched the Europa League game uh, against West Ham. Here you've got some original part of Salvers Park, the wooden roof. Now this is again going all the way back to when the stadium was built in 1924. Someone did ask why they were allowed to keep that roof after the, the disaster at Bradford City, but they'd reinforced the exterior. Now this is obviously just a general bar. You can come in and get your snacks and drinks during the game. On to, into the actual stadium, should I say. Now it is a nice stadium. At first glance, it reminded me of Everton Stadium. That being because of Archibald Leach, the same famous creator, designer of all these English football stadiums. Really nice though, I love an old school stadium. The beams are what, you know, the, the pole, should I say, are what reminds me of Goodison Park. So, uh, cracking tour so far. Very intimate tour. Nice and cosy, like when we went to Goodison Park. I don't know what I'm suggesting there. You know, it was cosy. There was no cuddling with the tour guy, Jane. Maybe once or twice we had a bit of a cuddle, um, you know, with her not knowing I'm a secret Man United fan. But this is where the press will be, I believe, the media. This is a nice view. But if you look up at the, the roof, the underside of the roof, it was just pure pigeons. Or maybe it was eagles, because Crystal Palace are the eagles. But a nice cosy little setup up there. It looks cosy, but it was bloody freezing. Again, just checking some of my notes in terms of Sowers Park. Yeah, 1924, the ground, uh, the work started and it opened in 1924. So you can see it's been there a while. It is aged. Let's not make any mistake about it. Sowers Park does look old, but I think with the, the redevelopment, with the new stand, it is going to improve. So if you've got like, what is it, 24,000 in capacity or 25,000 with another 8,000 seats, you're looking at 24, 20, so 30, 34, 35,000 in terms of total capacity. They're very proud of their South London roots. You can kind of see that iconic kind of writing throughout the stadium. It's a common theme. Now, as we go into the media center, this is somewhere um, where obviously everyone wants to take their picture. This is where you see the pre press conferences take place. Roy Hodgson kicking off. You've probably recently seen him laughing at Pep Guardiola. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. Into the away dressing room. Now, this is controversial. Oh, wow, it's big, isn't it? Um, has everybody seen the Brighton shirt? Where is the Brighton shirt? So there's a number of Premier League shirts, but there is no Brighton shirt, as far as I can see. I found the Brighton shirt. That is naughty. So in here is where the referees change. To the home dressing room over this way. Before we get into the home dressing room, guys, um, so you can see the 
see the Crystal Palace badge, there was debate over the, the date, the founding date. We're in the Ted Lasso room though. I've not seen Ted Lasso. It's been one of those shows I've always needed or wanted to see. But that was the Ted Lasso room because it was filmed here. Previously, you've just seen where the interviews take place in the tiny little corner and onto the dressing room. Now, most dressing rooms I've found from doing these tours tend to look quite similar. They've all got the LED lighting to match the club colours. Again, you can see the South London and Proud. The Crystal Palace kit, by the way, this season is absolutely beautiful. Randomly, you've got exercise equipment in the showers. I'm sure they get moved. So I'm gonna do a poo in the Crystal Palace toilet. So yeah, pretty pretty standard for a home dressing room. A lot better than the away dressing room, of course. But now we're going through the tunnel. Oosh, look at this. Again, no frills really. There's a lot nicer in terms of aesthetics, in terms of Premier League stadiums. It's really impressive how close they let you get to the pitch. Obviously you're not supposed to go on the pitch, but a really cozy tour, very up close and personal. Yeah, they keep talking about how cosy it was. I swear to God there was no cuddling or minor cuddling on this tour. You can really see the similarities with Goodison. Again, Archibald Leach has made some, uh, made some of the biggest stadiums in English football history. Padded seats. So I've just been informed by one of the fans that the away fans sit over there in the corner. So that pretty much concludes the tour inside. Do a little bit of a conclusion outside, but thoroughly impressed. The inside was a lot better than the outside. The outside did look very worn out, run down, but obviously with news of the new stand being built and stuff like that, I'm sure this stadium's gonna get an upgrade. And internally, what a great club. So a thoroughly enjoyable tour guys, much respect to Crystal Palace, apologies for being somewhat disrespectful and wearing the shirt Eric Cantona Kung Fu kicked a Crystal Palace fan, obviously that took place right here at Salhurst Park. There's been other significant moments like we mentioned what other two clubs had played at Salhurst Park in the 80s, Charlton Athletic played there and also Wimbledon. And that was the place Beckham scored that famous halfway line goal, which basically skyrocketed him to, to mega stardom. So loads of, and also the, there's been great goals at Southwest Park, mainly against Wimbledon. The Tony Yeboah goal took place there as well. Loads of big moments have happened at Southwest Park. You might have seen during the little look at the trophy cabinet, there were some FA England sort of plaques at the top because Southwest Park has hosted England matches in the past. And it is one of those old school grounds, again, I keep making the connection to Goodison, that is historic and often gets forgotten. Again, maybe I was a little bit harsh on the exterior, but let's be honest, the exterior of Southhurst Park does look a bit run down. It doesn't look like your conventional Premier League football stadium. But when you come inside, you realise that these stadiums are a dying breed. Again, Archibald Leach, some of his finest creations are over time vanishing into thin air. So it is a shame. Uh, I'm glad that they're staying there and are just redeveloping that stand. Again, 8,000 extra seats because Crystal Palace have got some of the best fans in the league. And I really want to come here and experience a game at Salhurst Park. So ladies and gents, if you did enjoy the video, stick a thumbs up. I'm still quite new to YouTube, but I am going to be, I'm planning on going part time in my employed work in 2024 to free up more time to film videos like this. You might think, Christ, doesn't that man look rough? Most of the time I film these tours, film these match day vlogs on minimal to no sleep. I work during the night as a milkman and then throughout the day I start filming videos. So a lot of the time, like I'm just looking at me right now, <laughs> look incredibly tired because I normally am. So all I ask is you just show your support, stick a thumbs up and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos. Let me know in the comments below, guys, what stadium you'd like me to tour next. I've got a couple of weeks off in January and I'm planning to get a lot of the London clubs ticked off the list. But again, your suggestions below would be helpful. So thanks for watching again. I've been Roy and I'll see you again for either another stadium tour, a match day vlog or general football shenanigans. See you soon.